sing of how awesome you are, of your marvelous works, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are a way maker. You are a provider. You are a redeemer. You're a magnificent King. And we bless your name in this place, oh God. God, we leave it all on the altar today, God. You deserve everything that we have to give. So this morning, right now, I dare you to open.
you made up your mind that you will make his praise glorious this morning in the room. Hallelujah. We don't want to go through form and the ritual and not engage with his presence. We're here for you this morning, God. We declare we want your glory manifesting in the room. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we are here for you. You're our purpose. You're our desire. Yeah. We're here for you. Let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours.
shy with it now. Come on, let's crank up the volume with our praise in this house. Hallelujah. This is your first Sunday of 2021. Let's make a difference. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Let's magnify him. Hallelujah. We ain't bringing an old praise. We got a new praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. If you've got two good hands and they working, how about clapping right now? Come on. If your mouth works, if your voice works, how about using it right now? Amen. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all your people. These are things that require movement. God's a moving God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just, just let me let me say to you, Happy New Year. Our first, our first service, official service. Now we had service in 2020 carried over to 2021 but our first Sunday of this new year good to see you here this morning God bless you for coming registering to those that are watching online God bless you I just want to say it and and listen it's not I hope it doesn't doesn't fall on deaf ears and you say well we've heard heard that spiel before but I want to applaud you commend you and thank you for your faithfulness in 2020 amen Amen. I want to tell you, there, there's, there, was, there was times when it would have been easier to quit than it was to hold on. Amen. Come on, let's be real. Put your, come on, make, make, please, please promise me that this is going to be a real, uh, a year where you're going to be real. Come on, come out of your religious facade and your fake self, your pretend self. Come on, it was a battle in 2020. There were times, there were times I heard the voice quit. Amen. But God would say, hang on. Thank God that, that the devil wasn't the only one talking. It would have been easier to, to run away than it was to stand your ground. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of reason to quit. A whole lot of reason to, you know, just collapse. But we stayed faithful. We stayed diligent. And I promise you today, you don't, you don't regret it. You don't regret one prayer. You don't regret one service. You don't regret one time you had the chance to give and support the work of the Lord financially. It takes finances. That's not the most important. Amen. That is not the most important. Because if you've got a whole lot of money and you ain't got God brought in by prayer and fasting, then your money just bought a bunch of stuff. It's not the most important, but it is important. You do. Because the world, that's their currency. You can't go up to the... To the <laughs> Any, any, any gas pump and say I pray you in the name of the Lord fill my tank they take a different, a different kind of currency so when we get ready at the end of the month to pay salaries or we get ready to pay mortgages we get ready to pay insurances and utilities we can't send a prayer we don't, we don't look at me we don't send prayer clause because they won't do nothing but send it right back try that this month see, see how long you're going to have lights you better send a check. You better send a, a credit card number. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe 2020 was a year of up and down for you. Make up your mind in 2021, you're going to be consistent. You're going to start right and you're going to stay right. Say that with me. That feels good. Start right and stay right. Start right and stay right. Make up your mind. I, call it a New Year's resolution. Call it a promise, a pledge, a covenant. Call it what you want to call it. But, but let's all make up our mind we're going to do better this year be a better husband better father be better church members be better ministers amen amen the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement you never get out of that room you can always do something better and I want to, I want to I'm, I'm in the process of reevaluating me reevaluating us what can we do better what can we do better Listen, listen to what I want to share with you before, before we see one announcement then we're going to have communion and then I'm going to get right into the word uh, the word does not work because you hear it it don't work because you hear it because God knows a lot, a lot of people have heard the message of salvation ain't saved 
lot of people heard love one another. They ain't loving. Anything but loving. So hearing is not enough because the most of the world, in fact, the American church has heard all this. But the Bible said you got to be doers of the word, not hearers only. It ain't enough to amen. It ain't enough to shout over it. You got to do it. You got to put into effect these principles. The word works when you work it. Don't talk about faith and you ain't got no works backing it up. Faith without works is dead. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Why y'all so quiet? Why are you so quiet? I know I'm on because I can hear myself. Your, your, your talk doesn't match your walk. It's not what you say. It's what you do. And I want you to make up your mind today on the first Sunday. On the first Sunday, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do better this year. When 2021 comes to a close, you're going to reevaluate and you're going to say, I want to do some stuff better in 2022. It's just what we do. It's how, we, it's how we're put together. But I hope that your list of things that you need to do better has shrunk. There ought to be a few things that you say, I did better this year. I did better at this. I did better at that. Now, at some point, you're going to be asking for a contribution slip. Many of you will. When you look at that thing, and then you get your, your 1099 and your W-2, Man, y'all can make me feel so alone sometimes. I just, I don't. Uh, you're going you're gonna to look at what you gave to the church, and you're going to look at your W-2, your 1099, and if it don't at least 10%, you rob God. At least 10%. You robbed him. And how you going to spend a whole year robbing him and come in here and say, coming out of the wilderness. Coming out of the wilderness. No, you ain't. You ain't coming out of nothing. You and your disobedient self. You ain't coming out. I don't care how loud we cut the music up. I don't care. I don't care if these lights blind you. I don't care if we got so much fog until you can't breathe. It's in your hand to be blessed, not ours. Joshua said, observe and do. You got to do something. You got to do something. You got to do something. Raise your hand and say, I got to do something. Can I go a little deeper? It's my Sunday. I'll do what I want to do with it. <laughs> I was thinking about the feeding of the 5,000. How that Jesus could have spoke the word and said, just let every belly be full. He didn't do that. He let other people take part in a miracle. And those that, that sowed into the miracle got the blessing back. Now you had you had you had five thousand people that all they got out of that was a belly full, but you had one little boy that he didn't just get his belly full; he carries back with him twelve bags of fragments. In the church, you've got consumers and you've got producers. You've got people that come to church every Sunday. All they want is what I'm gonna give them. They're happy if somebody puts something in their belly. But you shouldn't be happy until you have put something back. Don't be consumers without being contributors. What can I get out of church today? Let me ask you something. What, what are you putting in church today? Used to have people come up to me and say, I want to meet you. I want to find out the vision of this church. I want to find out what, what this church is about. See if I want to join it. I said, I'm tired of hearing that. Here, here's what we're going to do. You're going to take my time to meet me. I want to find out if I want you to join it. And when I started telling people that's how the meetings were going to go, people quit calling me wanting to meet. Because I want to find out, are, are, you, are you going to be something i got to carry around for the next 10 years? Or are you going to be something you're going to carry your own weight? 
Are you going to be something that I got to stay behind you and push you and drag you and pamper you and pacify you? Or are you going to be somebody that says, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my thing, Pastor. You ain't got to worry about me. I'm going to teach classes. I'm going to sing songs. I'm going to pay my tithe. I'm going to give an offering. You ain't gonna, I ain't going to be no troublemaker. I'm going to be a problem solver. Well, anyway, that's sermon number one. You got about three more coming today, so just hang in there. Amen. All right. Now that I've, I've made everybody mad, and those that are not mad, depressed, we will, we will play one announcement. Good luck getting something out of this one. <laughs> Good luck, Brother Van. <laughs> Here we go. Let's talk about marriage for a minute. Maybe that'll put a smile on somebody's face. <laughs> the One Marriage Ministry is hosting a Night to Remember Valentine's event on February 11th. The cost is $70 per couple. To take care of your payment, go to thepraisingplace.org and click on the Marriage Ministry tab. And I think there's not another part of that that says, don't you take your tithe money and go to that banquet. I think that's part two. That's, that'll be showing next week. Don't. <laughs> amen, amen. On your way in, you, you were given an opportunity to get a communion cup and wafer. We're going to observe communion. It's been on my heart for several weeks. And uh, I almost did it the Sunday before Christmas. And then I almost did it New Year's Eve. But I felt like today I just want to kick this, this year off right with this. And uh, I want you to take that. And uh, if you don't have one, if you'll, you'll just kind of wave at one of the ushers it'd be short by oversight not intentional but we want you to observe you may want to go ahead and get get uh, get your fingers working and peel back that first layer just a little bit that reveals and exposes the wafer and then that second will expose the juice and uh, please don't spill it on on yourself or the seat or the carpet amen Amen. You think as much as we pay for these bad boys, it'd be easier to open. <laughs> but it can be somewhat challenging. You may want to, you know, help the children. The children are more than welcome to participate. We, we want them to observe it as well. And here's what I'm thinking. Some of you may not know, we, we call it the Lord's Supper. Uh, then, then before that, it was kind of called the Last Supper. Okay, because it was his last supper with his disciples. But way, 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 way before that, it was the Passover meal. You may not know that. Because God, God said, I'm getting ready to deliver my people from bondage. And I'm going to use a lamb to do it. Woo. He said, there's a plague coming on Egypt. On the firstborn. He said, but if you will take a lamb. And you will take its blood and apply it to the side post and the upper post, which gives us the shape of the cross. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thus, pass over. You get that? Then he said, uh, I want you to roast the lamb and eat it. Don't waste it. A lamb for a house. So if the blood was applied, you were safe from the penalty of death. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. I believe in church attendance, but he ain't going to check to see how much church you attended. He's looking to see if the blood's applied. I believe in tithe and offering, but guess what? There's a whole lot of people that put money in the church that's going to hell because the blood was never applied. He, he said, when I see the blood, I got to see the blood. And then it wasn't just soul salvation, it was body restoration. Because the Bible said when they left, there was not one feeble person among the tribe. Now we're talking two to three million people and nobody was limping. Nobody was blind. Nobody was suffering from back pain. No, nobody using a cane or a walker. It's hard to fathom. But they had faith in what the lamb did. So I'm praying and meditating. God, what, what direction? How would you have me to approach this sacred moment? And he said, I want you to celebrate what the lamb did. And we commemorate it. We show forth the Lord's death till he come, but we examine ourselves. And, and Paul said, some have, have, have not discerned the Lord's body. So it's, it's the blood that washes, cleanses, atones. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So the... Great juice represents the blood. 
But that wafer represents his body, which was broken. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I got one more thing to say, but right now we're going to take a moment, we're going to pause, and we're going to examine ourselves. And if there's anything in us, we want God to, to cleanse it, remove it, so we can partake of it here in just a moment. But let's examine ourselves before God, that He would search us and know us, our downsitting and our uprising. See if there be any wicked way in us. Cleanse us from secret faults, presumptuous sin. Let not sin have dominion over us. Cleanse us from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, which is our reasonable service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the washing of the blood. Now, before we partake of it, when we partake of it, this is what I envision. We're taking of the body and the blood. I want us to embrace healing for our body. I believe right now, and I, I, I really feel strong about this, that as we partake of communion, I want us to claim healing going through our entire being. Healing our emotions, the wounds of our spirit, mm. healing our body going into the, into the fiber and the fabric going into the marrow of our bones, going into the sinew, into the joints, blood cells. Woo, come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now this makes sense. Now this makes sense. I've been hearing all week from God something that, that kind of left me scratching my head until now. now. Now it adds up. God said to me, people have confidence in a man-made vaccine going into going into a needle, going into their arm, but they are so hesitant to believe me. And I kept saying, why are you telling me that? You think if somebody shoots you full of a vaccine, you're going to be well. But we look at the blood and the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ and wonder if it's enough. It's enough, baby. <laughs> Take the vaccine if you want and keep wearing your mask. Listen, be safe. But I want to tell you, his stripes healed me. His blood preserves me. I ain't looking to a needle. I ain't looking to a vaccine. I'm looking to the Savior. Yes, I am. Some are trusting horses and some are trusting chariots. But I will remember the Lord. I will claim your healing from my body. I will claim your help. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Now let the church partake of the Lord's Supper together. Hallelujah. Healing into my body. Mobility. Flexibility. Strength, inflammation, stiffness, go. Come on. Infection, get out the bloodstream. Go, go. Cells, cells, rejuvenate. Restore what the locust. Restore what the canker worm. Restore. Restore my, my, my strength as the eagle. May I run and not be weary. May I walk and not faint. Oh, I feel it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Take it and see if something don't happen. I believe it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. He was wounded for us. Bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes I am healed. 
Sunday to be a Sunday of ironic blessing and you know you know we've, we've heard the hit song the blessing and Judah has learned it and they've sang it and and I really didn't I really didn't put two and two together I knew the verses but I didn't connect that it was the ironic blessing and I'm going to pronounce a blessing on you before you get out of here today I'm going to preach you all the way through a blessing I'm going to put a word on you I said I'm going to put a word on you some of y'all are alive now because you got up under the word. Amen. I believe the word will preserve you going out and coming in. Somebody shout yes. So I've asked Judah to sing this song, to sing it through, and then I'm going to come back and preach to you. Get ready, get ready. Something's moving already, and it's going to get deeper and wider. Amen. Come on, guys. Come on.
family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon the thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon and the thousand generations God is for me. God is for me. I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but I read of one, one, one um, scientist, doctor, learned man said, oh, it's just a matter of time. You all going to get it. I said, God is for me. That's all I know. That's all I know. Regardless. 
I can't be worried about what people are trying to put on me. God is for me. God is for me. God is for me when I'm well. God is for me when I'm sick. God is for me when I got money. God is for me if I ain't got no money. No matter where you put me, God's still for me. No matter where you find me, God is still for me. Somebody shout, God is for me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Judah. God bless you. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to take you to the book of Numbers chapter 6. I will just say this. Our, our Zoom schedule resumes this week with ladies' Bible study Tuesday at 10 and then the youth, young adults, Bible study Wednesday, 7 by way of Zoom, children's ministry, 7.30, and then Thursday, Zoom, Thursday night prayer. And I'm going to add one more caveat. The month of January is a month of fasting for us. I would, I would just say to you, don't, don't be running, running, running around doing a whole lot of other stuff and wear yourself out so you can't pray. Okay? Take those clothes that don't fit back and if you can't, can't find nothing, just wait till February when you dropped about 10 pounds and then you can find something to fit. But I want you to conserve your energy. I want you to, because you're, okay? Because we're fasting. Now, I'm not going to tell you don't eat a meal for the next... 30 days or what have you. You've got to do what God tells you to do, whether it's a Daniel fast, eat a meal a day, or fast a meal a day. And we're going to pray, listen to me, starting next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to open this sanctuary up on Sunday night for prayer at 6. We're coming back to church on Sunday nights. Amen. Amen. You can, we're going to social distance. You know, you know, people don't attend prayer like they attend church. I hope we can change that, but we're going to start praying next Sunday night at, at 6 o'clock. We're going to be here. We're going to open this house up for prayer. My house shall be a house of prayer. We're going to do I told you. I told you we, we're good at, at praise breaks, and we're, we're good at a lot of stuff. And ain't nothing wrong with any of it. It's important. But we're going to have a renewed interest and, and investment in prayer in this house and win in the loss. Amen? Come on, put your hands together. That's good news. Amen. Okay, Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. And the Lord spake unto Mary, Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Hmm. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. I will bless them. God said to Moses, I'm going to give you a word to tell Aaron. When he opens his mouth and speaks this, it's going to change my people. My people will be blessed. Somebody shout, I am blessed. We appreciate those of you that are in our overflow today. This, I think, is the first time we've had to utilize the overflow Please don't get depressed and discouraged because you're watching it on screen. Be glad that you're at a church that's full enough that we have to use the overflow. And we're still honoring social distancing. If, you, if our ushers put you in a certain place, don't cop an attitude. And when we dancing and shouting, you run over there on the other side of the church and mess stuff up. Don't get out of order. Okay? I can't see. There ain't a seat in this place you can't see. I can't hear. There ain't a place in here you won't be able to hear. Okay, if they sit you somewhere that's different, just come early next Sunday. That's all I can tell you. Just be, co be compliant and listen to them. Because I will tell you to leave. I will. If you want to come up here and try to jeopardize what we're trying to do to keep people safe, I will tell you, stay home. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Amen. There's going to be order up in the house. Amen? Amen. God ain't a God of confusion. Amen. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. All right? I don't have a problem asking God to bless me. God is a blessing God. The devil is into subtraction and division. God is into addition and multiplication. 
I serve a good God. <laughs> Even when times are bad, God is good. How many of you know you serve a good God? And, and the fact that he is good means that it is his providential nature to take care of me. He said, if you being evil know how to take care of your kids, I know how to take care of my kids. And God is notorious for protecting his children, keeping them out of harm's way, getting them through things, getting them out of things, turning over tables and giving them manna, angel food. Amen. Putting, putting tax money into the fish's mouth. God is notorious for taking care of his children. So I don't have no problem asking God to bless me because I need to be blessed. I need the blessings of God. And I know a lot of people are somewhat intimidated and bothered to ask God to bless them. Well, you stay unblessed then. Don't come mess with me because what I have been praying and what I have been pronouncing over my family has been working and I'm going to keep it up. And I ain't taking my blessings off to satisfy nobody. Amen. You don't believe in blessing? Why are you working 40 and 50 hours a week if you don't believe in blessing? Hello? Ain't none of y'all would turn down a promotion. Ain't none of y'all turn down a raise. Come on. Amen. In fact, you probably want another one, don't you? That's just because because we there's something on the inside of us, and I'm not talking about being greedy either. I'm talking about knowing that God wants to take care of us. And David said, "I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging bread." I'm not talking about excess. I'm talking about success. There's a difference in stuff having you and you having it. I want God to bless me so I can be a blessing. Amen. I don't think God's happy when, when the kids, they, they, their teeth are aching because they need to see a dentist and you ain't got no money to get them there. I don't think God's happy when, when a senior citizen is struggling and, and, and cannot get the prescription filled because they ain't got money. I don't think that's pleasing to God. I believe that God wants to take care of his kids and God don't have a problem you asking him to take care of you. Am I helping anybody? And this really solidified and settled it for me when I found people praying to be blessed in the Bible. Now, I want you to take a picture, whatever you got to do with every one of these screens. I will not give you all the verses, but I have done a whole lot of homework for you, and you need to take it and spend the next seven days studying through all this stuff. In Genesis chapter 32, I find the prayer to be blessed. Jacob is praying to be blessed. He is left alone until the breaking of the day. He is running from his, his brother Esau who has vowed vengeance and said, if I ever get up with him, I'm going to kill him. Because he took something that belonged to me. And the Bible said that there wrestled with Jacob a man until the breaking of the day. And the angel said, if I don't get out of here, I ain't going to get able to get out of here. And he said, I tell you how, y'all let you go. You got to first bless me. If you bless me, I'll let you go. Oh, Lord. And guess what? He blessed him. He changed his name from Jacob to Israel, from a con man, a trickster, a player. Come on. He was the original gangster. <laughs> and he changed him to a prince with God. Yes, he did. And then you know 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. It is the prayer of Jabez who said, Lord, I want you to bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Come on. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from evil that it will not grieve me. And the Lord granted unto him his request. And I have incorporated these prayers into the prayers that I pray over me, over my church, and over my household because I'm just simple enough to believe if God answered them once, Brother Van, he will answer them again. Why did you put these prayers in the Bible if you didn't want me to pray them? Tell your neighbor, pray the prayer to be blessed. And then I took it a step further. I didn't just, I didn't just pray to be blessed. I began to speak and pronounce a blessing. I practiced Deuteronomy 11:29. 29. God told Moses, you will put a blessing upon Mount Gerizim. So I began to put a blessing on my home. Why do you be, believe in cursing, don't believe in blessing? Why do you believe in witchcraft? Why do you believe in astrology? Why, why is it you won't leave your house before, before you read your horoscope? 
You believe that foolishness and nonsense and don't want to step on a crack and break your mama's back and, and, and uh, come on somebody and you all up into lucky numbers and that foolishness and nonsense but don't believe the Bible that said you can put a blessing on a place? Don't you know you're in a house that is blessed? Because we, those that are in spiritual authority, we spoke a blessing on this house. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, every brick, all the mortar that holds the brick, every nail and every board in this house is blessed. It ain't blessed, but it ain't blessed because the wood came over on the ark and it ain't blessed because the water that we drink come out of the flinty fountain. We're blessed here because God said in 1 Kings chapter 9, if you dedicate a place to me, I'll keep my house on that place. He said, I'll put my name on that place. There is a blessing on this house. Somebody shout yes. Yes. But it's more, it's more than, than, than geographical. It, it, it is personal because it's not just a blessing on the place. It's a blessing on the person so that no matter where I go, I carry that blessing with me. No matter what house I'm in, I'm blessed. No matter what street I'm on, I'm blessed. No matter what year I'm living in, I'm blessed. Come on, somebody. No matter what job, I'm blessed. No matter what church, I'm blessed. No matter what zip code, I'm blessed. That's how the Bible said I could be the head and not the tail, blessed in the city and in the field when I come and when I go. Because it ain't the blessing on the place, it's the blessing on the person. And I am blessed. I'm telling you, flat footed on this first Sunday in 2021. Shout, I know I'm blessed. So here's what I begin to pray over me and pray over you. It's right out of the book. I pray that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. That the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. That you'll see things you've never seen. That you'll experience God in ways you've never experienced him before. That your end will be greater than the beginning. And the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. I do believe that. I believe the, the blessing in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that I can bless your basket. I can bless your pocketbook. I can bless your checking account, your savings, your investments. Come on. I, I can bless your resources. I can, I can cause you to get 10,000 more miles out of those tires than anybody else. I can cause you to get more miles per gallon out of that car than anybody else could have. God said, I can bless your children and your children's children. I can bless your dog. I can bless your cat. I can bless your fish. Everything connected to me is blessed. Come on, I, I don't hear nobody. I said, everything connected to me is blessed. Oh, yes, it is. Hallelujah. But here's what I also pray. I, I pray over you, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. And, and Moses said, the Lord's already blessed you, and he's already multiplied you. You're already blessed, okay? He said, I've already made you like the stars of the heaven. He said, but now I pray an extended blessing. I pray an accelerated blessing. I pray a, a blessing of multiplication upon you. He said, I pray that the Lord, you're already blessed. Ha, I said, you're already blessed. But he said, now I pray the Lord make you a thousand times better than you are. Oh, I knew you'd be happy with just a little bit more. But God said, I can do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask. Of I can give you a press down, shaking together, running over blessing. He said, I can make you the envy of all your enemies. Told about I tried to keep them back. I tried to oppress them. I tried to restrict them. But God made your boss work for you because God said, I know how to be a lifter up of your head. Blessings are not something that's philosophical, ideological, conceptual, but I'm talking about the real deal, sure enough, touchable, tangible, visible, transferable blessing. Stuff that you cannot deny, you can't, you, 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 you can't argue with it because it's right up in your face. Come on, watch this. Let me walk you through it. Genesis chapter 24. Abraham is, is sending his servant to find a, a wife for Isaac. He said, I want you to go tell how God's blessed me. So that, so that Isaac's wife will know she ain't coming in to no struggling family, but a family that God has smiled upon. 
And that blessing is going to carry over to you and your seed and your offspring. And, then, and he said the Lord has blessed him with herds and flocks, silver and gold. In fact, Genesis 14 and 14, he had 300 servants. Ain't that an awesome blessing? And watch how it's transferred. Genesis chapter 26, Abraham's son Isaac sows in the time of famine and gets in the same year 100-fold. And he waxed great and grew until he became very great. Did you see that? He, he went from great to very great. He went from bad to badder. <laughs> he, he went from blessed to more blessed. And that's what God said I'm able to do to the next generation. And watch what the scripture said. He had possession of herds and flocks and the Philistines envied him. So that's Abraham blessed. That's Isaac blessed. Watch Jacob be blessed. Jacob's father-in-law changes his wages 10 times. And I promise you there was never an increase. Because when you read somebody changing your wages, that ain't ever good. He, he, he cuts his salary 10 times. But you know what God does? God has a way of multiplying what little is left in the hand of Jacob. And the Bible said that God bless him so much so until when Esau comes, Jacob has such a blessing until he gives him hundreds of cattle, he gives him uh, camels, he gives him uh, uh, sheep, he gives him ewes. I mean, he gives him all sorts of blessing because it continued to increase from generation unto generation. What about Joseph? Look how Joseph was blessed. No matter where you put Joseph, Put him in the prison. He gonna run to prison. Put him in Potiphar's house. He gonna run Potiphar's house. God made him second in command, second only to to Pharaoh himself, and he ran the Egyptian economy. I want to tell you, the devil can huff and puff and try to blow your house down, but God said, no weapon formed against you will prosper, and I will be the lifter up of your head. I, I will make your feet like hinds feet. He said, you'll be like a deer. You'll jump over stuff. They try to trap you, but you keep jumping over it. You keep getting out of it. Somebody shout, yay! <laughs> but the blessings that I'm talking about are, are more than something you can fold up and stick in your, in your secret compartment of your wallet. You know, guys, you've got that secret. The secret place of the most high. <laughs> Ladies, ladies, they got multiple places. Every pocketbook has a place. <laughs> they got multiple places. They find money everywhere. I asked my wife, I said, why is it I can pay for something with cash and they give you the change? Because God gave her the ability to get wealth. <laughs> I'm getting broker and she's getting richer. <laughs> hey, like that. But anyway, anyway, as long as she stay with me, I'll be all right. <laughs> So, so what, what you're seeing is, is the ability to be blessed financially. But what good is it to be blessed financially when you've got a wife you can't get along with? A husband, you think he's slipping around on you. Don't know if your kids are alive or dead. Hello, church. So God says, I give you relational blessings. Watch this, Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies be at peace with him. Watch Proverbs 18, 22. Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Come on, fellas. You ought to be shouting. <laughs> then chapter, chapter 19, verse 14. Houses and riches are an inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. Come on, ladies, I'm working for you today. Psalm 127, 3, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. But then there are spiritual blessings. Blessed is the one that God allows to approach unto him. Do you know how fortunate you are that God didn't cut you off? 
He had every right to cut you off. We were guilty as charged. None good. No, not one. You know we kept making promises and then breaking promises. And God would have been justified to said that's it. Shut off our air supply and send us right on to hell. Oh, but where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And he said you're blessed because you didn't choose me, but because I chose you. And blessed is that man whose transgression is forgiven. And we rejoice not because devils are subject to us in his name but we rejoice because our name is written in the Lamb's book of life somebody shout I'm blessed like that there, there are people that I know right now and I know you you got a list of names as well that they got all kind of stuff they got they got more money they can count more cars they can drive I mean you can get lost in the house you need a GPS to be able to go from room to room in their house but they don't have the joy that we got today they can't sleep like we sleep their food don't taste as good as our food. They eat filet mignon and it don't taste as good as my PB&J. Come on, talk back to me somebody. Cause I got clean hands and a pure heart. <laughs> because it is well with my soul. I can abound and I can abase. I can be empty, I can be full, but whether I am, the joy of the Lord is gonna be my strength. And I've always been this way. Always been this way. You see, I, I didn't just get excited when I got a bigger house and a newer car and another another suit to hang up in the closet. I always have acted like I owned it all. <laughs> I, I've always acted that way and, and just carried myself that way. I don't know why it's not arrogance and not, it's not conceit. Because God knows we had some humble beginnings. Janice and I, our first house was 400 square feet. That's it. That's all. That's it, right there. 400 square feet. Now my garage is bigger than my first house. 400 square feet. I had to go outside to change my mind. <laughs> we had to get along or kill each other. You don't put two adults in 400 square foot of house. Come on. We didn't have no carpet. We got secondhand carpet. I got the carpet out of somebody else's house. They got new carpet and rolled their old carpet up and threw it by the road, and I got it. I bought a washer and dryer for $25 and knew how to cover the scratches. Come on, come on, somebody. I, I had, I had a, a refrigerator that had a freezer that it didn't have no automatic ice maker. I had to fill the little trays up with water and stuff it back up in there myself. Come on, we, come on. Her daddy, Jerry, Jerry worked for the housing authority and went to the projects and got about four heaters to make one good one and put it in our house. Come on, my, my mama, my mama reupholstered our furniture. I bought the, the, the fabric. Because I thought she knew what she was doing. And she run out of fabric. And it was mismatched and it was two-toned, but it didn't make me know never mind. But our, our television, our television was black and white. Our television had rabbit ears with aluminum foil to help the reception. I didn't have a knob to turn it. I had a pair of pliers, thank you very much. I was my own remote control. How you like me now? Yeah, we've been to the clinic. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. I, I know what government cheese is. Thank you very much. But I walked around and strutted my stuff because I was a king's kid, baby. I was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. I was an heir of God and a joiner with Jesus. And I knew you couldn't put me where he didn't want me. And sooner or later, God. Before I go on, let's break it. Let's break it down to where we're really at. If you can smell, I said, if you can smell, you bless. If you can taste, you bless. If you can breathe, you bless. Come on, you better thank God you ain't on a ventilator. You ain't stuck in ICU, grumbling and complaining. Shut up. Shut up. You can stand on your own two feet, clap your own hands. You washed your own face. You brushed your own teeth. You got yourself ready today. How much more do you need? You are blessed, baby. And I want you to take 30 seconds right now and praise God for blessing you. Blessing you. Blessing you. You can't me. You should.
secured me. You secluded me. You sheltered me. And I bless you, Lord. Come on, 20 more seconds before I finish preaching. I'm blessed. Don't forget how blessed you are, baby. So here's where I want to take it. I want you to have a blessed life. Listen, not a blessed season. Not a blessed year. This is the year of blessing. I hope I live longer than a year. I don't want just a year of blessing. I want a life of blessing. Let me tell you, there's a difference between blessing and miracle. Okay? I know that every... Every blessing is a miracle, and every miracle is a blessing. But, but hear me out. I want to I be blessed to the point it ain't going to take a miracle for me to get my house. It ain't going to take a miracle for me to get a car. I don't need a miracle drug, a miracle cure, a miracle vaccine. I want, I want to live such a blessed life until it affects every area of my life. And listen to me, hear me. Got some teaching to do right now. The, the blessing that I'm talking about comes when you get in alignment and agreement with the word spoken over your life. It matters who you sit under. See, y'all were, y'all were clapping a minute ago. It matters who speaks into your life. It matters who you connect to. The power of connectivity. He that walks with the wise will be wise. The companion of fools shall be destroyed. Come on. The greatest thing you have is the ability to pick and choose. Did you not know that the same door that lets people into your life can take them right back out of your life? So if people are coming into your life and they're causing chaos and havoc and confusion and and they ain't nothing but troublemakers and agitators, you need to put them right back out of your life. Jonah, sometimes you got to put Jonah off the boat. (laughs) I I get leery with people that, that, that they think the fact that they don't have one church or one pastor makes them spiritual. That, that, that don't make you spiritual in God's eyes or my eyes. You don't prove your spirituality by saying, I don't need a pastor. Like you're so spiritual, nobody can pastor you. Don't you know that the spirit of wandering is part of the curse? No place to call home? Come on. Come on, look, look, look at, 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 at uh, Cain kills Abel and Cain is always on the run. He is a vagabond. Look at Satan who comes in the book of Job and God said, where you been? He said, I've been wandering around because he didn't have a place to call home. You need to have a place to call home. God has a place for you. God has a people to connect you with because people can help you get where you need to get. Come on, if you were king, you got to have a Samuel somewhere. Come on, if you're a Joseph, you need a butler that'll open doors and pull a seat out for you. You need a baker that will bring ingredients together and make something. You need a Pharaoh that'll write a check. You didn't get there by yourself, and you ain't going to stay there by yourself. Somebody has to help you. It takes community. Come on, you're still blessed, aren't you? You know why you're blessed? Because you hang out with me. I I ain't apologizing. Iron sharpens iron. I'll sharpen you up. Let me tell you, some of y'all read, you don't ever get no sharper. You hang around dull people. I'm going to cut you sometime because I'm sharp. (laughs) But I ain't going to leave you like I found you in Jesus' name. I'm going to make you better. And if I need to, I know how to pour in some oil and wine. See, I wouldn't go to a church. I wouldn't go to a church where the preacher wasn't a Ginsu pastor. I wouldn't go to a church where the preacher didn't have a sharp two-edged sword. I wouldn't go to a church where the preacher was afraid he's going to run off somebody and wouldn't tell you the truth. 
You need a preacher that'll challenge you, that'll push you, that'll pull greatness out of you, that'll tell you you better than that, that'll tell you you need to put away your childish behavior and you need to grow up into him in all things. Come on, this is good preaching today. I lost six of y'all right there, didn't I? Listen, listen, listen. You shouldn't choose your church no more than you should choose your mate. Y'all seen that bumper sticker? Attend the church of your choosing. The devil is a liar. You know you make too many bad choices to risk your spouse and your soul to choice. Please tell me you didn't, didn't come to this church because you flipped a coin. I just, I just saw you on TV. Please tell me you are here because you felt this was an assignment for you. That God wanted to plant you here. Those that be planted in the house of God shall be fruitful. So God, it ain't that one church is better or one group is better or one preacher is better. It's not that. But God has a set place for you. God has a set man for you. God has a set assignment for you. And you need to trust God as to who your pastor is going to be. Not one that will leave you lazy and lax and lethargic. You need to thank God whether you attend this church or you stay here or whatever. This is a pastor that will use you. I will use you. God knows I will use you. I don't have a problem using people. I want people that will minister. Listen, I'm tired of deadbeats. I'm tired of people just along for the ride. I want some people that are ready to get busy in 2021. I'm ready for some new blood to come up in here. Because some of the old blood ain't done nothing in five years. It is time for a turnover. It is a time for a shift. I need some people with some energy, some excitement, some enthusiasm. I need some people got some anointing. I got too many people that all they want is a name and a title as it is. I want somebody that said I'm ready to show to the Lord and bear the burden and win the lost at any cost. Do you qualify? I won't, I won't read it, but, but there's Jeremiah 23 that says, there's, there's, there's people that are scattering, but I'm going to send somebody that will gather you together. And there's a word in this house that can affect your house. God is a speaking God. Let me walk you through this. Words set the tone, the tenor, the climate, the condition, and the atmosphere. You can walk into a room where there's been an argument. You didn't hear it. But you can feel it. Come on, talk back to me, somebody. You ever walked into a room where there was a knockdown drag out? And you didn't hear nothing, but you could just sense and feel? There's some attitude in this place. Come on, talk back to me, y'all. You can feel it. I, don't, I hate to say aura, but there's something that comes along with it, you know. You know that argument and that attitude. and, and uh, so, so you better be careful of the words. Because the first, the first usage of words was not for information. It was not for inspiration, not conversation, not communication. It was for creation. He was the word made flesh that dwelt among us. All things were made by him and for him. Right? He's before all things, and by him all things consist. There's the scriptures. The Bible said right now, Hebrews 1 and 3, he upholds all things by the word of his power. And when God speaks, something happens. Even if you cannot see it, something happens. It's impossible for God to speak and there be no sign he has spoken. When God says, let there be, it will be. <laughs> you Never mind what ain't. If God said it will be, it will be. You remember Jesus, he spoke to the fig tree. And there was no visible sign. Anything happened. But the next day they came back and the fruit and the leaves were all withered up. Okay? He spoke to the root. Y'all keep talking to the fruit. What you need to be talking to is the root of it. And get to the root of the matter. And just because you can't see it in the natural doesn't mean God's not doing something in the spiritual. At the end it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. You keep speaking the word of God. God will hasten his word to perform it. The grass will wither. The flower will fade. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word creates moments, movements, openings, and opportunities. Did you, did you ever play Mother May I? Come on, y'all. 
did, did you ever ask your mom or your dad to do something and they'd say, not till I told you you can do it. So you had to wait for the word to release you. Come on, how many of you are with me right now? Come on, it's important that you get this. There's some things that are not going to happen until the word releases it. It's waiting on a word. And, I, and I've got Romans for you. How can they call on one they have not believed? How can they believe on one they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? So the chronological order is God sends one with a word. You hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So I preach it. You hear it. You believe it. You call and are saved. Same thing happens over and over and over again. You hear it. You believe it. You call it. And you get it. You hear it. You believe it, you call it, and you get it. In fact, you wouldn't even be saved if it weren't for the power of confession. For with the heart man believes, but with the mouth, with the mouth, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Some things require a verbal activation, a release. That's why I have you say amen, coming into agreement, coming into alignment with it. So be it. Oh, God, if faith can come by hearing, fear can come by hearing. Don't look at me like that. I promise you, you can hear one word and your whole countenance change. All the, all the blood drain out of your face. All you got to do is sit in the doctor's office and hear the word cancer. You, you can almost stop breathing. Stroke. COVID. All of a sudden, you can't move. Your eyes closed. You, you go into a coma. Because that's what fear does. Listen to me. Fear paralyzes you. I know what I'm talking about. Because I don't know when I, when I became afraid of heights. Now I can get on a ladder, but that's about the extent of it. We went to the Empire State Building and I was stuck to the wall like Spider-Man. Jenny said, come over here, look. Went to the Grand Canyon. I couldn't even walk the trails. No, because I look over there. I couldn't even breathe. I couldn't swallow. My mouth got dry. Paranoia. Come on, come on. Fear. And you do know there's a difference between caution and fear. Fear will paralyze you. Fear will make you, make you immobile. I can't move. I can't go. I can't get out. Don't turn me off. God did not give you the spirit of fear. If you got a spirit of fear, God didn't send it. The devil sent it because he don't want you to move. He don't want you to go nowhere. Don't want you to do nothing. Don't want you to pray. Don't want you to fast. Don't want you to study the word of God. Don't want you to worship. He wants to anesthetize you. He wants to mummify you. He wants you to be still. That's why I'm giving you this. 2 Corinthians 13.1. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. You better be careful who you come into agreement with. You agree with that negative report. Agree with it. You need to change the agreement. Make different declaration. Remember the story of Esther? Haman had convinced the king to sign a decree that all Jews would be exterminated. Esther goes in. He says, I'm a Jew. I'm going to die too. He said, well, I can't make a new decree. He said, but this is what you can do. You can write a new decree and I can sign off on it. You can make another decree that'll cancel out the old decree. See, that's what some of y'all have done. Please hear my heart. You have agreed with their declaration that you will die and will not live. Y'all gonna leave me up here like this, huh? You have come into agreement 
with their declaration that says you've got to die and cannot live. But I'm telling you, I believe his report. Hebrews says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You living in a world of fear because fear frames your world. But I'm not going to live in a world of fear. I'm going to frame my world with faith. I'm going to frame my world with life. I'm going to frame my world with blessing. You got to make up your mind what kind of world you want to live in. And then find a word and start decreeing it over your family. Silent faith doesn't move mountains. You got to speak to it. You need to speak in faith. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Listen, simply because somebody repeats it. Because a parrot can quote the Bible. It works because you believe it. And I'm not talking sorcery, witchcraft, none of that voodoo, none of that foolish mess. I'm talking about I have a right as an heir and joint heir and as, as a child of God to say what my daddy said. Come on, where's my people at? I said, I've got every right. I'm in the family. I wear the signet ring. Come on. I'm a son of God. Are you, are you his child? Do you have his authority? Do you have his blessing on you? Then you have a right to say what he's already said about it. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes that where the, where, the, where the word of the king is, there's power. And we just come through Christmas, did we not? Did you not read it? How that, that there was a decree given that all the world should be taxed. And guess what? It didn't matter whether you agreed with it or not. When the king decreed it, you had to live by it. So when God says a thing, it has to happen. Language is a locator. I'm getting ready to, to bless you in a minute or two. But language is a locator. Have you ever heard somebody talking and you say, you're not from around here, are you? You know, they say taters and maters and taters. And, and then you, you, you've heard people from up north, you know. Yeah. They, 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 you know they ain't from around here because they don't put all the letters on the word. They park the car. That's just, you know, come on, y'all, they park the car. <laughs> we had too many letters. I saw Janice put a meme up about library. You know, you can tell we Southerners that we, we, we library instead of library. And Feb it's February. We, we <laughs> you can listen to somebody talk and find out what they really believe. If all you can talk about is COVID, All you can talk about is empty churches. All you can talk about is masks. All you can talk about is vaccines. Guess what has weighed into your heart? Why have you quit talking about the joy of the Lord is my strength? Why have you stopped saying the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much? Why have you, why have you stopped saying my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? Why is it that all you can talk is the negative? Because their words have got into your mind and affected your thought process. Now out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh and I gotta say this you better be careful coming into agreement with death words death words death words De this is killing me I, I can't take no more you better be careful you better, the devil can't read your mind but he can listen to your words and your conversation and you ain't ever just sick you always and tired sick ain't bad enough you gotta be tired long being sick I'm gonna be sick and tired you're coming into agreement with death. Don't you know the power of life and death is in the tongue? Why don't you start speaking life? Why don't you start speaking healing? Help. So all you do is talk about people backsliding. Why don't you talk about people getting saved? 
Well, 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 Paul said, I believe and I've spoken. That's what I'm believing. I'm speaking what I believe. Put these, put these right here, starting at Proverbs 6, 2. Just a few of these verses right here. I want you to go home and read them. I'm not going to quote them. I'm not going to read them all. But some of them, some of them say, watch. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Decree a thing, it'll be established to you. You're snared by the words of your mouth. Watch. Your words will never snare me. It's not what you say about me. It's what I say about me. I know what likes my preaching. You know why they don't? Because you don't. You've spoken that. The Bible said in James, be swift to hear, slow to speak. Let me give you this before I move on. Isaiah 28, 18, your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. I tell you right now, you need to come out of agreement with depression. Come out of agreement with defeat. Talk about I can't win for losing. Who are you serving? I said, who are you serving? God ain't ever lost a battle. And if you ain't winning, it can't be over because at the end you win. All things work together for good. God takes what the devil meant for evil, turns it around for good. I'm trying to get you excited. I'm trying to stir you up to let you know no matter what you faced last year, no matter what you got to deal with this year, you are still going to be blessed and highly favored of God. Let me set you up for it. Okay. One more thing. One more thing. There's a difference in talking to people, talking about people, and speaking over them. I'm speaking over you because the spiritual authority can speak over the child. Look at these verses. Isaac, Genesis 27. Isaac, Isaac has, has blessed Jacob by accident. Esau comes up and says, don't you have another blessing? In other words, Daddy, all you got to do is speak something over me. Whew. Look at Genesis 35. Jacob reversed the curse. His wife, Rachel, called the boy Benoni, son of sorrow. He said, no, you ain't going to call my baby sorry. He said, he's the strength of my right hand. Genesis 49, Jacob calls all 12 of his sons. He said, I'm going to put a word over you and tell you what will befall you in the last day. He prophesies their end to them. Look at, look at Joseph. He, he knows his dad is dying. He said, I want you to put a blessing on my boys. And he puts Manasseh, the oldest, on his right hand. And he puts Ephraim, the youngest, on his left. And the Bible said that he switched his hand. And the greater blessing lands on the second son. And Joseph doesn't like it. But the daddy says, once the father has spoken it. Are you, are you catching what I'm telling you? Once he has spoken it, it can't be changed. Read your Bible. Your Bible. Moses tells the, the tribal leaders, you tell them if, if the woman of the house makes a vow and the husband hears it and lets it stand, then it, it cannot be altered. But if the wife makes a vow and the husband hears it, the husband who is the higher ranking member read your Bible, has the authority to reverse the curse. I don't care what they put on you. I'm putting a, a blessing on you today. God moves through channels of authority. Would you agree with that? Look at the military. We've got several that have, have courageously served this nation in the military. The private didn't get y'all to move. But the captain or the general did. <laughs> Some voices can't get you to move. But other voices get you to move. The Roman centurion said, I tell one go and he goes. Did you catch me? He said, I'm in authority. He said, and by my words, author, authority, by my words, I can cause things to shift place. <laughs> Come on. By my 
my words, I can cause things here to go over there. By my words, I can cause things over there to come over here. You didn't hear what I said. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that the word of faith is nigh you even in your mouth and in your heart. That if you believe it, it is time for you to put your faith where your mouth is. And I know you're going to sound stupid and you're going to sound ridiculous. But if God says it, you've got the authority to say it yourself. And you need to speak it over your family. Speak it over your job. Speak it over your ministry. Speak it over your life. So here we go. Here we go. Now here's how I want to do this. Okay, I'm not going to have you stand. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put these things over here. There's about ten of them, I think. And uh, when, when there's something that applies to you, I'll, I just want you to kind of do this thing. I want you to reach up and grab it. Symbolically, reach up and grab it. Some of you may stand up. <laughs> but when, you, when, when I say something, okay, that you feel is befitting to you, your family, you, I want you to, that's mine. All right? Are you ready? So it's all based on Numbers chapter 6, 22 through 27. That the Lord will bless you, keep you, make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord will give you peace and bless your children and the children after them. Okay. Out of, out of Leviticus 26, here's what I speak, I speak unto you. It's out of the Bible if you want to argue with it. Here's where you're going to find it. Leviticus 26, that God will give you rain in due season. When you need rain, it's going to rain. Look at the hands going up, needing rain. <laughs> rain finances. Rain prosperity. Rain wisdom. <laughs> God, I feel it all over me. I can't hardly stand myself. Watch, watch. And the rest of that says that the trees will yield its fruit. So here's what God told me to take this verse and pray this over you and speak it over you right now. That God will give you what you need at the right time. That it won't be early, but baby, it won't be late. You don't want God to send you tomorrow's bread today. And here, here's what, here, come on, I see those hands going up. That God's going to perfect your timing. It doesn't do you any good to go to the dealership before the car's on sale. So God says, I'm going to order your footsteps so that when you need it to rain an automobile, so that when you need it to rain better transportation, better income, better resources, I'll put you in the right place at the right time. I'll tell you when to buy it. I'll tell you when to sell it. I'll tell you when to speak. I'll tell you when to be quiet. I'll tell you when to move. I'll tell you when to stand still. Somebody shout yes. God said to tell you your reaping will last until you're sowing. Did you hear me? I'm still in Leviticus 26. That you're not going to go into a down season. That what you, what you sowed, you will continue eating until you get ready for your next harvest. God told me to tell you there'll be no lapse. There'll be no lack. There, he told me to tell you there'll be no interruption. Just when you need it, it's going to show up. Oh, oh God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aren't you glad you came and got this word? He said, he, he said, give you this. I'm still in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 5. You'll eat bread to the full and you will dwell in safety. Your harvest will not be stolen from you. Did you hear me? In, 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 in Judges, I believe chapter 6, the Midianites and the Amalekites, they were watching. And whenever Israel got ready to take the harvest, they let them sow, they let them tend to the fields, didn't do anything. But when they were ready to take the harvest, here come the army. And they, they swooped down and they took the harvest. <coughs> and Brother John, the people of God had to, had to gather the harvest and run into caves and, and dens and thresh their harvest and thresh their wheat. They, they couldn't enjoy the harvest. They had to take the harvest into hiding. It does no good for you to have a harvest when you got to go hide it. So God said for me to tell you this. This fruit will remain. That he's going to rebuke. That's why you tithe. I don't tithe just to get more. I tithe to keep the devil off the stuff I already... Hey. 
I tried to keep him out of my pantry. Keep him out of, out of my refrigerator. Keep him out of my closet. Keep him out of my bank account. Hey, 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 that what God's already given me. Somebody shout yes. He said, I give you peace in the land and you will lie down in safety. I say right now, nobody going to put fear on you. Nobody going to put fear on you. No doctor, no surgeon, no lawyer, no governor, no president, no boss man, no relative, no spouse, no preacher, nobody going to put a spirit of fear upon you. I decree right now, my peace I leave with you. My peace I Peace that passes all understanding. Joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Watch this. And I will rid the fields of the beast. And you shall not have to draw your sword to protect yourself. In the Bible, the evil beast represents satanic forces. But God said, watch. He said, I will whip your enemy for you. You will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The enemy you see today, you will see him again no more forever. Oh, he told me to give you Zechariah 2, 5. I'll be a wall of fire round about you. It can come, but it will not prevail. No weapon formed against you will prosper. I'm going to hide you in the secret place of the Most High. I'm going to hide you up under my pavilion. And when the wicked, even the enemy, comes to eat your flesh, they're going to stumble and fall. Because the Lord is my hiding place. The Lord is my sword and my shield and my high tower. The Lord is my light and my whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? I got more to say if God will let me. But I feel like right now we need to just praise God because a spirit of fear has come over you. Praise him. Praise him. Go till I tell you to quit. Praise him right now. Praise him right now. keep losing you keep trying to fight a battle that's not yours he said the battle is not yours the battle is mine if I hold my peace let the Lord fight my battle if I sing and shout it have faith and never doubt victory shall be mine the battle is his but the victory is mine come on and praise him for victory right now
to see him, but I can feel him. He's all over me, and he's keeping me alive. close with this and we're going to shout a minute. I put something on you. Come here. Come here, Matthew. Get ready. Get ready. At the age of 17, Jacob calls Joseph puts on Joseph a coat of many colors. His brothers hate him because of his coat. They hate him because of his dream. And they got his coat, but they couldn't take his favor. Watch me, watch me, watch me. A coat of many colors was designed by Jacob specifically to prophesy where Joseph was headed because the coat of many colors was the coat of a prince. He says, son, you going places. You might go to the pit. You might go into the prison. You might go to Potiphar's house. But when it's all over, what I put on you today is going to make you a prince.
just say, hey, self, this is what a blessing feels like. Because oh, I am blessed. I am a miracle. I am a success. I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. And he says the mountain was holy, but it was not holy within itself. It was holy because God touched it. When God sits on it, I, I think somebody showed us that New Year's Eve. When God sits on it, when the Holy Ghost sits on you, you got to be different. And today he has set on you. He has put something on you. Raise your hand and say, I receive it today, God. That my life will be enhanced, enriched. Oh, yeah. You're still going to have some battles. Still going to be some things to deal with. But you're going to deal with it different now. Because the blessing of the Lord is upon you. And God said, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. I ain't, I ain't thinking how to hurt you, how to harm you. I'm thinking how to bless you, how to help you. Let me show you this, I promise. I plan to say way, way, way another time, but watch. God put such a blessing on Abraham until he said, everybody that blesses you, I'll bless them. Boy, that's a blessing, ain't it? It literally means everybody that helps you, I will help. And those that don't help you needn't ask for me to help them. God can put such a blessing on you. People can't pinpoint it, Brother Van. They, they don't know what to call it. They call it luck. You got a, you had a, caught a break. They call it a lot of stuff. But it's the blessing of God. It ain't lucky numbers. It ain't born up under a sign. I'm a child of God. And I can't help but be blessed. The devil don't like it, but I'm blessed like that. 
can you just slip your hand up right now? And I don't know how you want to go about it, but I want you to love on your father right now. Hey, 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 hey. Sababa, hundo, We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Man, play, play what you're doing right now. Oh, I feel the mood changing. I feel gratitude coming in. Hey, it's about to get crazy up in here. It's got to get on your children. It's got to get on them. Got to get on them. It's got to get. It's too great. He'll pour you out blessings you ain't got room enough to receive. It's got to go to the next generation. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. It's got to go. to go to the next generation. Ah. Ah. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to ask you how you're living. How is it with you and God? If you don't know, I mean know in your knower, if you are not sure and certain absolutely convinced that you're saved I wouldn't walk out of this room without making sure make your calling and election sure because you know what what else is sure death death is sure judgment is sure so you better be sure you're ready for death and judgment I want everyone in this room and those watching online to pray this prayer with me. I'm going to take it slow so you can get it in. I want you to pray it from your heart, everybody. Dear God, I come to you in Jesus' name, confessing I am a sinner in need of your forgiveness. I know Jesus is your son and that he died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again. And I will stand before him one day. And I want to stand with a pure heart and clean hands. So I repent and I turn from my sins. And by faith, in the completed work of the cross. I am clean. Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. And I will serve Him the rest of my life. Now and always, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Je Boy, it feels good to be clean. In Jesus' name. This is what the world didn't give to you, and the world can't take it away. Right here, right here, right here. <laughs> it is well with my soul. How many of you, you know you can raise your hand and say, It is well with my soul? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is well with my soul. Father, I want to say thank you for a word that, that, that changes the course and the trajectory of lives. Thank you for such freedom. Freedom to preach, freedom to worship, 
for him to receive. Thank you for such a, an atmosphere of acceptance and cooperation. Father, as we pray our way out of here, we pray for Brother Brian's father. We pray for Brother and Sister King and Sister Amanda. We just ask, Father, that you'll touch Sister Belinda, the Patterson family, Sister Catherine. Minister, Lord, we have pastor friends, the Adkins that are in the hospital, the Gunters that are in the hospital, all of them with COVID. Lord, to touch these ministers of the gospel. Lord, please, please keep us safe. Help us not to be lax, careless. Help us to be diligent, yes. mindful, considerate. I feel like to pray this over us. Father, if, if we're about to go into a place and we feel, feel something trying to stop us, then help us to listen. If I'm getting ready to, to reach for something or go down an aisle and I don't feel right about it on the inside, may I listen to that voice. If I got to change aisles, if I got to change cash registers, if I got to go to another drive through let me be alert, sensitive, discerning. If I need to stay at home a day, if, if I need to change my routine, help me to stay alert to you. You can see what I can't see. You, 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 you know the traps that the enemy may have set in the way. And let me be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keep me from things seen and unseen, known and unknown. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Huh? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, and use us. May we be meek and humble, lowly servants. When we have an opportunity, when you're ready to use us, help us not to shy away from it. Let us keep our head down and our mouth shut. Let another man praise us and not our own mouths. We'll give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him one more praise. Again, thank you for, for working with the ushers. Please distance yourselves as you exit. Don't forget your mask and hand sanitizer and all that good stuff. And, and not just here, but abroad. And thank you. Register. If we, and thank you if you have to be in the overflow section. Don't Just work with it, okay? If you don't feel like that's the Sunday you need to be in church, stay at home. If you get around somebody that has it, quarantine yourself. Don't bring it up in here. Halle. <laughs> Just be smart. I love you. Don't forget all the Zoom schedules will resume this week. God bless you all.